are y'all ready to get into one of the most popular saints of all time, one of the most well-known, but she's so awesome that I can't resist doing a video about her. Saint Therese. Okay. Saint Therese of Lucie. If you try, I have my really bad French accent. Actually, okay, so what we're going to be focusing, I, I'm trying to focus less on her and more on her little way because that's, well, not, she's awesome because of the little way. Or that's why she's popular, I guess is a better way to put it. Um, so I'm going to talk about how her life in, like impacted the little way and how that her life helped the little way come about. And then we're going to talk about the little way and how it is an awesome way to holiness. Okay, so when was she alive? 1873 to 1897 is her lifespan. And what's important about that date, I know I don't like to focus on dates, but what's really important during that time period, it's the kind of, not the end, but the Jansenist heresy is still around. What's the Jansenist heresy? This heresy is a heresy that says that God is a wrathful God, he's all just, there's like no mercy, and you have to work your way to he work your butt off to get your way to heaven. You can only receive communion if you are perfect, if you are a saint. And basically, you're on your own. Like, God's just up the policeman writing down all of your sins. And maybe if you do something good, he'll be happy with you. But honestly, it's just good luck. You're probably going to end up in hell. Is That's the basic attitude of the Genesis heresy. And so this is what Therese grew up with. Um... A few other things about her life. Her she her mom died when she was three, like three or four from cancer, um, and after that, Therese was this emotional wreck. She was so sensitive and broken. She just she really didn't have she didn't have good social skills and really only stayed with her family. Um, she oh another thing because of and then another thing because of her the Jansen series she had this thing called scruples and it's basically like everything is a sin all of my actions are sins and I'm offending God and all of these things and it's very very debilitating um, and then um, other basic things about her life she was the youngest of nine children five uh, four of them died so five survived they were all girls and all of them became religious. Four of them are Carmelite, one was visitation. And then she entered the Carmelite at the age of 15 after begging the bishop and then the Pope. She appealed to the Pope so that she could enter and finally made it in. Um, all, there's all, there's a way more to this, but I don't have time really to get into it. Uh, go read all the books that are written about her. And then she died at age of 24, suffering from tuberculosis, but as one book put it, she died of love. She didn't die from, of tuberculosis, she died of love, um, because she just, her soul just couldn't wait to get to heaven. We know all about this, her life, okay, but how did that influence the way she lived, uh, lived out the gospel? Well, because of her, she was so broken, and because she was so weak, she felt that she couldn't be a great saint. And she's like, I want to be this eagle, but I can't be this, I can't be a big eagle. I can't do all the penances that you read about in, like, the Desert Fathers, and I can't go be that one saint that decided to go pray the Divine Office in the icy cold river and not somehow not get pneumonia. Like, I can't do those things. Those are my words, but that's basically what she said. Uh, I can't do those things, but I still want to be a great saint. And out of, so out of this littleness and brokenness, she rediscovered the heart of the gospel. I say rediscovered because think about it again. Genesis heresy in France, people had basically forgotten about God's mercy. Uh, so rediscovered the heart of the gospel, which is mercy. And she realized that God doesn't want us to be like take keeping track of all of our penances and being obsessed over whether we've sinned or not, and if we can receive Holy Communion because if we're worthy, all this, all this stuff. Uh, God doesn't want that. He wants us to be like a child. He wants us to have the freedom of ch children. And he is the one that will help us get to heaven through his beautiful, beautiful mercy. Uh, I saw there was a quote on the wall in my religion teacher's classroom for in high school, senior year. And I said, mercy is entering into another chaos. And I just love that quote. Um, and so... A lot of her, her little way, we're going to get into the specifics in a sec, but the, her little way consisted of uh, just giving herself over to God's mercy and letting he, him be the one that is going to make her holy. And uh, out of that flowed her doing, I'm sure you've heard the term, do little things with great love. So that's where, uh, if, so she, 
uh, God gives her mercy, and then she do these little things that really would go unnoticed. She's like, I can't do the great things at the same time, but I can do really little things. And it's not like these little things, like I said, they go unnoticed. And then also, sometimes people would misinterpret what she was trying to do, and then they would criticize her. And, I mean, it's the little way is beautiful, but the sainthood in general, no matter what path you take, is not easy. There are three basic steps, three, there we go, three basic steps to the little way. And you can read all that more in this book called 33 Days to Merciful Love by Father Michael Gately. Awesome, awesome book. I'm not getting paid to promote this, but seriously, read it. It's so, so, so good. It goes more in-depth about everything I'm about to talk about. So if you really like what I'm talking about, get the book um, and do it. It's life. Uh, okay, so like I said, three basic steps. Uh, recognize your darkness, trust in God's mercy, and keep trying. So, first step, recognize your darkness. The little way is not easy. Like I said, sainthood in general is not easy. But you have to recognize the fact that you're little, recognize the fact that you're broken, and recognize the fact that you're weak. And that's not... And kind of just accept that. You have to accept where you are. And we want to move from there, but you got to accept where you are. And a, a big part of this is the fact that since God's the one that's doing the work, you have to let God do the work of your holiness, you're not always going to see the process, you're not always going to feel the process, and it's God's time, it's not your time. So, sometimes it can feel really dark, and really just like, I don't feel holy, why I've been trying, but I don't feel holy, and you just have to keep, like, that. we're going to go into it through the next steps, but that's the first one, is just realizing that's what you, like, realizing that's what happens in a little way. Um, and he spends an entire week on this in the book, like an entire seven chapters on this. That sounds like a lot. It's really not. This is a, it's a 33-day preparation for something. So, a consecration. So, they're little, they're like two or three pages. So, when I say he spends seven chapters, that's like not a lot, actually. It's a whole week at a time. Anyway, okay. So, then, that's number one, recognize your darkness. Second, trust in God's mercy. And, I mean, they all kind of tie together. But God's, it's re realizing that God's the one that's going to be making you holy. God's mercy is what ultimately is going to get you to heaven. And just every time you fall is like still letting him scoop you up like a little child and keep going. Because like, that's, that's the way you're going to make it. And then the last one is try, persevere. Uh, a priest once said, wow, a priest once said, uh, perseverance is the name of the game when it comes to holiness. Like, perseverance is what is going to get you, like I said, mercy, but like, on your, on your part, this is what you do. This is what you're doing, is persevering through all the hard stuff and all the not, like, the, all the icky stuff that part, is part of life. It's doing little things, it's, okay, it's basic. well, it's basically, it's living a solid Christian life. So that's mass, sacraments, Daily prayer, doing little things with great love, forgiveness, um, all of these uh, little things. And the biggest thing is not falling into despair and not falling into this, uh, oh my gosh, I just sinned. It's the end of the world. And you just, like I said, throwing yourself back into God's mercy. As a wrap up, we're just going to go through a few of Teresa's quotes because her quotes are so good. And it's just like, how do I choose only a few? out of this treasure trove of dress quotes, because she wrote so much stuff, and then there's, so it's just such good quotes, but we're going to just go go through a few of those, just so you can get a little taste, and they are geared towards the little way, uh, but there are other quotes that don't necessarily directly relate to the little way. Love proves itself by deeds, so how am I supposed to show my love? Great deeds are forbidden me. The only way I can prove my love is by scattering flowers, and these flowers are every little sacrifice, every glance and word, and doing the least of actions for love. Our Lord does not look so much at the greatness of our actions, or even at their difficulty, there should be a why there, as at the love with which we do them. Miss no single opportunity of making some small sacrifice here, by a smiling look, there by a kindly word. Oh, and always do, always doing the great, the, uh, excuse me, always doing the small right and doing it all for love. My little way is the way of spiritual childhood, the way of trust and absolute self-surrender. Think of it, for one pain, born with joy, I shall love God more perfectly for all eternity. 
And boom, there you have it, a crash course on Trez's little way. For more uh, resources, I guess, go down description. And of course, that's just what I have with me in my college room. Because I have lots of other Trez books at home. But this is just what I remember off the top of my head about Trez. And then, of course, there are a million, million books about Trez. So just go learn about her. She wants to be your friend. Although I will warn you, sometimes it can be a little crazy. Because one of my friends is like, yeah, I love Therese, and I ask her for help. But I was like, Therese, I wanted A or B, and you gave me Q. So, just a warning. I mean, that's going to happen whenever you do anything with the saints and the angels and God in general. But, you know, just putting it out there. All that being said, get holy and have fun doing it.